All right, next on the, the list of things that we do here is move on to our discussion. So we've done our analysis where we've graphed our, our data. Uh, we've had a look at our graphs and then we'll see what they tell us using the discussion. All right, so as it says there, it's interpreting your graphs, your errors, your uncertainties, your limitations. Um, so in here, the findings need to be analysed or discussed, it should say, and interpreted. All right, so as it says there, this is where you write in detail about what your analysis shows. So things that you would use, and I touched this on the at the end of the last one, things that you would use would be like, um, you know, graph two shows. Um, you'd also need to discuss the errors in your investigation. Um, and identification of the limitations in the data and the methods and perhaps suggest improvements. All right, so things might be like your method, you might be to get time, you might have been using a stopwatch. So clearly that method has some limitations. Um, reaction time being one of those limitations. So, you know, you'd suggest how you could improve some sort of electronic timing. All right, so interpreting and using graphs. So graphs, here's a bunch of graphs. And so they can show the, the relationship or the trend between uh, two variables. And there's kind of different shapes, of course. There's lots of different shapes, but there's three main groups. And so these are the three main groups. So the ones up the top, here where the increase in one corresponds to increase in the other. So here in all of these, as X increases along this way, then the Y gets bigger along that way there. All right, you can use that point, move along to X, and the Y value is bigger as well. All right, so however that curve might be, um, that's the overall trend. All right, we might delve in a little bit more um, and find out these curvy ones, what what kind of curvy relationship that is. But, you know, we'll get to that. I'll talk about that later. The second group is here, here this time as one of them increases. So as X is increasing, so let's take this point here and we'll move across down to this point here. So X has got bigger, but Y has actually got smaller. So that's the second group. We're increasing one variable corresponds to a decrease, decrease in the other. And then, of course, the other one is uh, when you have one variable increasing and the other one staying the same. So, you know, there's no connection, no relationship between these, these two things. All right. So we'd say, you know, X doesn't, ooh, oh, doesn't affect Y in that case. All right, so let's have a look at an example how we might use a graph to, as evidence to support our findings slash discussion. So here we've got some uh, some data here in the table. I've just used these X and Ys. I've just made some some numbers up. Um, and this is what we've got, and it's called testing. And we've got X and we've got Y. And we can see from that as X gets bigger, you know, from down here up towards 4, you can see the Y gets bigger also. All right, so what can we say? As I said there, X increases, Y increases. What else can we say? Now, the data point X, this one, looks a little bit out of place in comparison to uh, where the others are. 
All right, so all the others are kind of following this kind of a, a trend. Uh, but then this one here, is, it drops down. So we go, oh, what's going on there? So perhaps, you know, we made some sort of error we were not aware of when we took that measurement or something like that. So perhaps, you know, we should go back and we should repeat that measurement. All right, so we could put a trend line in, and as I said, and I've talked about Excel has the, that capacity, and if you've looked at on those videos about how to use Excel, which is on the website Physics with Sino, um, in the Units 3, 4 Practical Investigation, it'll lead you through how to actually do that. All right, so for the above example, so to me, this is looking curvy. It's looking like it's curving around something like that, all right, just roughly. But if I get Excel to do things like that, and there's lots of different options in Excel. You can get it to put a straight line in. You can get it to put curvy lines in like this, which is what I got it to do. So a key thing here when you're trying different trend lines is this R squared value. All right, now our squared value is the coefficient of determination, it's called. It's the square of Pearson's correlation coefficient, or fancy names in statistics. But the upshot, as far as we're concerned, is the closer to one, <clears throat> in this case, the closer to one, this R squared value is, the better the fit with our data. Now you notice I've still got that dodgy bit in there. And uh, so this trend is curving around here and uh, it's kind of ignoring this dodgy bit of data that we probably should have gone back and, and redone. So, you know, if you try to do a few different things Excel, you can try different ones um, and find the one that's closest to one. In this case, because it's increasing, it's closest to one. If it was a decreasing trend, it would be closest to negative one. Or well, not when you square it, it'd still be closest to one. All right. So this supports what we already determined, but gives us some extra information. So we already determined as X increases, so does Y. But in particular, the bit that I'm interested in is this part here. The x to the power of 0.4991. All right, so Excel's come to come up with this number. Now, 0.4991, as I said here, is close to 0.5. And 0 0.5 is the index form of square root of x. So it would look like, it looks like that the relationship between the y and the x is, is that the y is equal to something to do with the square root of x. Now, the somethings to do with it would be this two at the front. Now, I know it's got a few decimal places, but we need to look and see and this is where our our errors and things come in. So you know, if 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 we're only measuring to two significant figures, one decimal place here, then we need to be looking at the same here. All right, because this has got four decimal places, five figures, but we've only got two in our information. All right, so. That's where that comes in. And the same here with this point, uh, 0.4991. We only got two figures. Well, we're going to round that off. And so when we round it off to two figures, we actually do get 0.5s. So this equation, when we're rounding it off, we're probably 2.0 times the square root of x is probably what we're looking for. All right, so the R squared value... Um, as I said, it's a statistics, won't go into the details about R squared, but the closer to one, the better. And so this is pretty close to one. So 
from what we've got here, we can say that there's a square root relationship between the two. All right, square root of x. So that's the data. We can say the graph, the trend line indicates that y varies with the square root of x. All right, so errors. I've already chatted a little bit about the errors and the uncertainty, all right, to do with our number of decimal places, which is back up here. See, look, only down here to second decimal places all we've been measured to. So maybe we can go to one more decimal place, but even still, when we go to one more decimal place, um, we still end up with the same. Um, so all equipment has error or uncertainty, okay? So there's, there's nothing that you can actually do about that. All right. So it's due to its manufacture, its precision, and its use. So if it's manufactured in a certain way, there's nothing you can do about that. All right, so it's manufactured how it's manufactured and often scientific equipment and stuff will, will tell you what its uncertainty is. So how well they've manufactured, which then leads to the precision. So that depends on what the precision is, for example. So, you know, they may be manufacturing something for with a certain precision. So you might get a, a ruler, for example, and your ruler uh, might be in millimetres, and where ruler divisions might be 0.5 of a millimetre. And so that's the precision of your ruler. But you might then also um, get a set of calipers. So, say, say digital calipers. Oops, spelled it wrong. And your digital caliper might be in millimetres, but it might give you three decimal places. So it might go down to 0.1 millimetre. So that's to do with the precision. It's got nothing to do with whether one's better or, or worse than the other. Um, it depends very much on your um, application. And so for some things to use a digital caliper, it, it's not going to be practical to use that. So like if you're dropping some ball from a height or something like that, then a digital caliper is not going to be any use to you. So you're going to have to go to your tape measure or your ruler. And so that's as precise as you can be. So things are, and, and then it's use now, that's, that's you. You've got to use things as well as you can. So an example that I'm thinking here is stopwatch. All right, so if we're timing things with a stopwatch, you're going to use that stopwatch as, as best as you can. And so... Um, <laughs> There's also, there's a limitation called your reaction time. Whatever you're looking at, you've then got to process that and then start or stop the watch. And so there's a limitation there as to how, you know, accurate you can be. All right, so it's a few things. Manufacturing errors, unavoidable. Already talked about that. If it's faulty, then get rid of it. Um, so we've already talked about this 30 centimetre might have millimetre divisions or half millimetre divisions, whereas a micrometer, which is a kind of digital caliper, uh, slightly different, but same kind of concept, might be to the third decimal place. Um, so uh, the last one, and it's used in the stopwatch, the error comes down to how you use it. And so what you want to do is you try and use it the same every time. So that's then going to reduce the effect of the, that error. So, for example, with the stopwatch, it doesn't really matter whether someone's got a fast reaction time or a slow reaction time, provided you have the same person using it all the time. You change your people using your stopwatch, then that's going to affect your results. But if you have the same person doing it, 
then um, it reduces that effect. All right, here's a few notes on errors. As a rule of thumb, the error in a measurement is plus or minus half the smallest division. Um, now, in the last couple of years, I can't remember which year it was, but there was a, a question on the exam. So that's the other thing I need to remind you. All these things in this practical investigation are now examinable in one way or another. And so they had a metre which was divided. So it had an ammeter or something that was divided into one amp divisions. It had a, a needle in there and it was a multiple choice question asking what the um, uncertainty in this was. So it's half the smallest division, they're one amp divisions. So 0.5 of an amp was the uncertainty. Human error. People still, it doesn't matter how much I say this, people still want to say human error. Human error is not a an accepted scientific error. Okay, don't do it. Right? If you want to be sloppy, don't be sloppy. Right? It's not an excuse to be sloppy with taking your measurements and then you go, oh, it's human error. Right? That's just sloppiness. That's not acceptable. Human error is not an accepted scientific error. All right. So we've already talked about the errors that in humans up here with our stopwatch, people's reaction time. It's not human error. It's the reaction time. So using a stopwatch, there's an error reaction time. If you're using some sort of electronic thing, then um, that's going to be better because it's not going to have the reaction time. All right. But do not say human error. If you think there's an error because of something, hone in on to what that error is. Mistakes. Mistakes are not errors. Mistakes are mistakes. If you've done something incorrectly, then do it properly. Um, Again here, poor equipment, handling should be rectified with practice. So if you think it's going to be something that's it's a little bit tricky to uh, to organise with it, so do some trial runs. All right. Oh, all right. I'm so popular. Um, so Excel, as I said, can put in error bars. And so here's an example. I've got some error bars here on this Excel. And so you can see the little error bars there. So you're expected to do error bars in some way or the other. Um, all right, so here's, um, oh yeah, 2019 VCAR exam where they, again, they've asked, they actually asked to put error bars on the graph, all right? So, and they're told here, here, I've got it here. We're told that the, uh, the length using a ruler, millimeter, so, Plus or minus two millimeters was what we were told was the the uncertainty, and so what we had to do in this task is you had to plot a graph. So given some data, you had to plot the graph. You had to include the scales and units on each axis. You had to put in the error bars, and you had to put um, lines of best fit. And they talked about spring A by itself, spring A and B together. All right, so be aware that these things that you're doing in your investigation report you can be asked to do similar things on the exam uh, limitations so here's a bunch of limitations so all sorts of things that limit the accuracy so the example of the stopwatch that limits how accurate can be in comparison to using um, some sort of electronic timer um, and so, your discussion, what do you need to do? These dot points, so do the results support or contradict what you thought in the beginning? Um, state the relationship between the independent and dependent variables, and up here was the square root relationship. Say what your errors, limitations, difficulties, they go in your discussion, mention what they are. 
um, experimental procedure if you think there could be something that could be even better um, then mention that and then uh, these last two are kind of linked together really so what might be a further study and so if you're watching this in 2020 this is your design aspect in your 2020 COVID all right then what do we got there's a whole bunch of resources down there this document of course is on physics with Sino and uh, there's some more recess sources if you want some more stuff all right I've waffled on for long enough so um, as always have fun and then if you need help make sure you grab me